Okay, so now we're just going to talk about the sundial box and uh, all the work we put into it and our personal takes on it. We're going to try to keep it uh, without any spoilers because uh, some people already asked me if there was going to be spoilers in the videos. It's the most complicated box we've ever made. And uh, part of the complexity is just all the carvings because the almost the entire outside of the box is carved. I mean, that makes the CNC run for a long time. You know, once you set that up, it's not like super hard to like carve on a curved surface, for example, once you get it set up and working. But just the mechanics, um, it went through so many iterations because it's round box and because, you know, we have very small compartments that we need things to move in and out of. And I don't know, it's just not like the sea chest, which was just like a square rectangular box that you know was very easy to wrap your mind around it just it just messes with everything when everything has to get smaller towards the center that was pretty difficult to get past but i'm starting to almost think i got my mind wrapped around it i mean it's it's definitely more complicated than i would say the the sea chest i mean i came in you guys had already started production when i came in on that but even then we were still kind of trying to figure things out but even that, that never came as complicated as this is. I mean, there's a lot to this one. Yeah, I would say I agree with that. It seems like whenever you get started in something like this, you never fully understand it, but as you continue to work with it, then you get to understand it more and it becomes easier, and you're like, well, it's not as complicated as it right. seemed like in the beginning. But this, I haven't got to that point yet. It's still yeah. very, very complicated in our minds. There's a lot going on inside it and even on the outside, you can see that. We made a lot of changes too. I remember there were some days where we would just talk for like an hour yeah. trying to figure out just one small thing. And it's like, yeah. boy, how are we gonna be able to do this? <laughs> and more times than not, we came up with one or two things to do, to do something with, but sometimes it was like, boy, we'll just have to come back to it and figure something else out yeah. or and we did which was you know was good teamwork but some man, some of those things yeah. like like the sea chest started out i actually added a couple secrets later like i can't remember if it was your idea for like one of the extra compartments underneath but um it started out much simpler and it was like here's kind of the mechanism and you know josh and i ever wasn't here at that point but we were like okay we understand like how this is all going to work mm -hmm. you know and you know we just went about trying to build that and then we added a few things well actually we could put this on top mm -hmm. and we could put this underneath you know with the extra space we had but this one is like you know it has a bunch of different cavities and all of them have their own thing which mm -hmm. <laughs> went through like every single cavity went through multiple iterations and redesigns and there's hours of sketching that mm -hmm. i did that never even made it onto the mm -hmm. onto the box, you oh. know. Just we just right. just because we changed ideas or we changed a mechanism or, mm -hmm. you know, we changed a theme in a particular compartment and you know, it, it, which is all part of the process. But you know, there was a lot of time just spent trying different things. I think it's good though that uh, it it really stretched us. I think in fusion and from manufacturing doing things that we've never done before and i think we all understand fusion a lot better now and we're all much better at it um everett did it, like all the sketching on the outside for all the carvings well i think all of it right yeah you or did 90 percent. yeah i would say least. i did about 90 percent. i know you did a few of them um and some of them we, we borrowed right. uh but yeah that was that was good that was fun i I had never used Fusion because, again, I came in, we were already in production when I came in for the sea chest. So you guys had a, pretty much already had all that stuff figured out. So it was kind of interesting for me. I had never used Fusion before either, but, uh, you know, I, I think it came out pretty good. Mm -hmm. So We were talking about uh, getting to a certain number and that making it worth it. And uh, I'm not sure we completely got that in on one of them, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, as far as, like, if you're making 10 boxes to put in the amount of time and energy you put into designing it isn't feasible unless the boxes are going to be ridiculously priced. Right. Whereas if you're making a lot more, this way, as that number goes up, right. it makes it more justified that we can put more time yeah. into the design and getting it 
and fine tune perfectly. Yeah, no way, like, if we were only going to make a hundred of these, no way, Jose, would I spend the amount of time we spent the last three months getting it to where it is. Like, I would be out of my mind right now. You know, I would just be like, no, we just got to go with kind of a simpler mechanism that's going to work easy. We don't have to fine tune, um, you know, rather than go with the elaborate systems that we were able to develop with this. All because we have, now that we know we have 400 buyers, it's like, okay. I suppose you still could if there were lower numbers, but you just have to sell it for like... 10 times the price every one you sold. Right. So that, nobody wants yeah. that. That is cool too though because I don't think anybody's ever made 400 puzzle boxes for $750. So like this is starting to get like to the most elaborate box for, you know, the $750 price tag. Like That's pretty cool when you think yeah, about that. Yeah. That we're kind of breaking grounds on new territory that's never been reached yeah. before. So that's what I'm really hoping for. I'm hoping people like see it as getting like extremely good value for the price that mm -hmm. they're paying. With this much design into it, there's boxes that sell for ten or fifteen thousand dollars, but obviously there's not very many of those. Back here, you're hi everybody. <laughs> you, you pointed out, you know, we we already had the people who bought in at the sea chest, and they obviously bought in at that price range for a reason, mm -hmm. and. I think it's good that we let as many people into that price range as we can, you mm -hmm. know? I think we'd much rather have 400 people buy into the box and enjoy our work than only 100 people at a slightly higher price, you know? And I think that that's a cool thing that we're able to get, we're going to be able to get more of these out to more people um, than we've been able to do on previous ones. You know, I think that's another cool thing that, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're branching out a little bit more. And I, I think there's more opportunity for people to, uh, to, get the, to get their hands on a box, which should be exciting, right. you know? Um, and the other thing is, uh, go ahead. The other thing is, uh, like, this is a $750 puzzle, but, like, we were talking about revisiting the Jack in the Box, like, making... A, two, a 100 to 200 hundred dollar puzzle but there there again like hopefully we'd be able to get a real high buy-in there like maybe 500 orders for like a 100 to 200 hundred dollar box and then you know we could break into a whole new market allow people who you know are a little tighter on funds to be able to buy a puzzle but also if we pre-ordered it knew that a lot of people were buying in then we could spend a long time making a really cool puzzle there and just at the outset, if you know how much time you can spend designing it, mm -hmm. you can make something really cool. Yeah. And I think we could do that for a hundred bucks, you know, with the CNC, do some carving, make an old antique box with hidden sliding panels and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. not only does it get uh, the mechanisms can be more interesting, but they can also get to where we can also design it where it's easier to manufacture. The more mm -hmm. time you spend in it, the better you can get it refined. You can make a really interesting mechanism, very yeah. simple and very reliable, and, and, mm -hmm. and still be all as interesting as it could be. We don't, and to be clear, like the CNC doesn't do everything. Like we still have to hand sand. We do a lot of hand fitting and everything. So it's not like it's totally all the CNC and like anybody can can walk in here and press a few buttons and out pops a box. Like there's still <laughs> lots of, of, of skill that goes into putting one of these things together and understanding how it really works. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, yeah. I don't even know if you want to say that, that it's not it's not all the CNC because clearly, I mean, it seems like if you look at that, um, CNC is not putting that together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, is the CNC is great, but, you know, it's still a machine. It still makes some mistakes, too. So you still need that. That's like you were saying, skill. I mean, even with the sea chest, there are times where, you know, you'd have to go in and manually fix things or get things to fit. I mean, that's. Mm -hmm. at, we can. We've gotten a lot better at it, and it's always getting more efficient, but you're still. You're, you're always going to need at least some of that. And I think that's also what kind of separates it from just, you know, 
being a plastic box that you get from Target or something like that. You know, like, th there's a lot of craft that goes into this, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Okay, so uh, one of the other things we need to mention here is that I think it's, like, around <clears throat> five components? Five or six. There's some. There's one or two that are super small. Five mm. or six components are printed from plastic in this box. Now, the thing about it is they're they're not going to be seen unless you like really dig for it in this box and like reverse it and like reverse engineer it. so right and and basically but, unless you break the box <laughs> but in yeah. order to get to get the price down in that 750 dollar price range we made a few gears like i'll show you a gear here for instance like these are two of the components that are printed from plastic the thing is you're never going to see this in the box and we're going to make it print it from black PLA anyway. But this part would be super weak if made from wood. You wouldn't really be able to machine it with the tolerances that we want and still have it be able to, you know, withstand the mechanism that, that, that it's in. So we decided to print this from plastic. We print this matching gear from plas PLA plastic. And those are going to be in the box, but you're never going to see them. And it was kind of hard to like cross that boundary and decide like, can we put plastic parts in here or not? But we only do it for the parts that we like can't make out of wood and have them like be reliable. Every other part we make out of wood, it's yeah. just, you know, a few like this, this, there's a really small one that goes in here. Um, yeah, there, there's a couple other ones in there. Oh, as oh well. yeah, there's yeah. one for the, mm -hmm. the spring pole thing. Yep. But so that's the, yeah. the other thing we wanted to mention. Which, if anybody has a problem with that, you can let us know. But as far as we're concerned, like we think it's fine because it's hidden. It just makes the box work. It makes it really cool. And I, I think the other thing that too is it also it just opens up a lot of possibilities for us especially within the price range that we're trying to hit mm -hmm. um you know i like you were saying if we were to use those gears and try to make them out of wood we might be able to do it but i think we would a always be concerned that over time they're going to wear out super easy they might break they can snap uh, it's going to be a, it would be a lot harder you know yeah th there's a lot of problems that we could have with that um yeah. with the 3d printing it's a little bit more reliable we can put it in the box and know that it's not going to just snap on us. It's not going to break. Yeah. Um, so I, I think in an ideal world, if we could do everything in wood and everything would work perfectly, mm -hmm. obviously I think we would go that route. But right. I think it's important to know that it does open up possibilities for us. It you know, gives us the chance to do things that maybe we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Um, so, right. you know, just keep that in mind too you know that that's a that's an important part i think in how we kind of came to that decision and you know mm -hmm. what we were going to use whether we were just going to do only wood or whether we were going to put plastic parts in right. i know that was a big part of the discussion that we had as, as to whether or not we were going to do it um, but I, I think we made the right decision too i think you know especially the small am amount of parts that we're using uh, they, they all seem to be working really well. We really haven't had an, any problems with them once we get the, you know, once we get it dialed in. Mm -hmm. They've been very reliable and we really haven't had any issues with them. Which is, is good for us, but also good for, for you guys because that means that the box is working how it's supposed to. Alright, with that said, um, thank you everybody for watching the video. Uh, we don't do this kind of video often, but I thought it'd be cool to get all of our the creator's thoughts. In on the box and we didn't try to give away any spoilers for the people buying this to solve um, so hopefully uh, we didn't give anything away but um, it was fun to discuss it and hopefully we'll have some more discussions as we you know start shipping these things and get our minds more accustomed to how the box works and, and making it all that stuff we'll have more videos coming out later but Anyways, it's been fun, and I hope everybody enjoyed it. Please leave us a comment if you want to see something in particular in the next few weeks. Um, appreciate everybody buying into the box, all the new subscribers. 
So uh, y'all have a good day and we'll see you again later. Goodbye.